welcome to the Easton Online Podcast. I'm your host, Elliot Marshall. And what this podcast is here to do, it's here to help you gain strategies and tactics and tools that are going to help you grow in your martial arts business. If you have a martial arts school, a gym, this is one of my passions is how we spread the message of how to really grow culture and business and and some ways that we do it the best with our people, with our staff, with our clients. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Give a listen. Guys, here we are. Another episode. Easton Online. Take two. (laughs) <laughs> um, it's been a morning, Peter. It has been a morning, and I am here with one of my very best friends. Um, everyone's been one of my very best friends so far, so another one of them. Um, Peter Straub, uh, GM of the Littleton Academy. Yes, sir. What's up, man? How are you? I'm well. How's How your you? coffee? We always talk about coffee first. Incredible. Thank Incredible. you very much. Yeah. I told you no Starbucks, right? No Starbucks. You told me very explicitly. I say, you know, I give everyone a warning. <laughs> Don't you come to my house with Starbucks. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I will make you coffee, <laughs> even if we have to run a little late. That's right. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. So um, I know you thought a lot about what you wanted to talk about, and you actually came a little prepared, which is out of my realm. I'm, I'm going to let this go. I don't feel very comfortable right now, but this is not my podcast. Well, I appreciate this that. This is our podcast, the whole academies. This so, is this is for us. And this is for us. It's in that spirit that I wanted to, like I prepared something. I felt really inspired to write it down. Okay. And so I want to share it with you. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you stepping out of your comfort zone here let's, a little let, bit. So. Let's, let's do it. We good? Yeah, All let's right. go. Go ahead. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, I know this is being recorded and I thought it might be something that people would want to listen to afterwards if you don't like it or don't want it in we'll just edit it out and pretend like this never happened and we can do the things the way that you uh, had already planned jamie do we edit out rarely rarely well <clears throat> we'll see see how you feel <laughs> <laughs> go ahead uh i know you have a kind of a, a script or an outline for this and i definitely want to stick to it but first i have a re- request and i'd like to read it so it comes across the way that i intend uh, i want to provide some context before I ask it. The context is this. I've known you for over a decade. Uh, When I met you, uh, we worked at the foundry together. You had just come back from Ultimate Fighter. Uh, You were the first person I ever knew who was on TV. (laughs) And uh, you were a black belt. You were a UFC fighter. You were a big, funny, charismatic character. Uh, You were larger than life. And you were my hero. I wanted to impress you. I wanted to gain your approval and to be good enough for you. Something I've grown to learn about myself is that my underlying limiting belief is that I'm not good enough. But you helped me feel like I am. Uh, It took time and it was a struggle, but through jujitsu and martial arts, uh, over time you helped me replace my insecurities with confidence and you helped me start believing that I am good enough. Sorry, <laughs> this is, um, uh, I learned a lot from you, um, but I've also learned a lot about you by listening to all your stories and watching so many of your interactions around the academy. I've come to believe that one of your biggest fears is that you won't be loved. And I think that this comes from your underlying limiting belief that you're not lovable. So I think that you created this persona, uh, the fire marshal and He's the superhero that I idolized. He's loved by everybody, and this is true. He's very effective. Um, He knows how to connect with people, and he's very skilled. He knows how to talk to people. It's almost mesmerizing. I I know personally I've found myself agreeing with you in the moment, only to later realize that I didn't actually agree. (laughs) Uh, But I've also been alone with you. Uh, I've had heart-to-hearts with you. Uh, I've shed a lot of tears with you. And I've met the real Elliot. Uh, He's not the same as the fire marshal. He listens deeply. He cares. He's loyal and kind and compassionate. And recently, we've had some rocky times. (laughs) I've been frustrated with you, and I would bet that you've been frustrated with me too. We've had some hard talks, and they've been, but they've been good ones. Uh, It is because of these talks that I feel comfortable asking you this request. When you invited me to do the podcast two days ago, I was really scared to do it um, because I don't want to do it with the fire marshal. My request is just that I want to do it with the real Elliot because I fucking love you and I believe that you're lovable even if sometimes that you don't. Thank you. Um, 
Ooh, we have a long pause. It's okay. Everyone's nervous to do the podcast. I will say that. Uh, Mike was nervous to everyone, you know? Ooh, I guess we're going to get into Am I Lovable? For just, I mean, you brought it up. Yeah, All we right? can. You, you brought it up. Um, so, yes, right? And Jordan, I guess we can cut this out if we want to or not, because uh, it's a little, it's not, I don't know how business oriented it is, but maybe we'll get there, okay? So yes, I had an interesting life, right? I had an interesting life. I had great parents, I had great, great everything, but there comes a point in your life where your parents can't do it for you anymore. And at that point in my life, nobody was there to do it, right? Like it, it just didn't exist. And pretty much there was only like one person, maybe two people, and they, but they weren't in my everyday, they weren't in my school, right? So I had to like seek that out somewhere else like my school, like my high school, right? Because most of us make these friends in high school where it's like, these are my homies and I love them and we love each other and blah, blah, blah. And we think this and, you know, we're going to be friends forever. And like, I mean, most of us know that's not true now. Right. Right. But I never got any of that. So yeah, it sucked. Like it was awful. Go read my book. I, I, I describe it everywhere. Um, and then I moved to Colorado. And I, I can remember on the plane crying because my friend, the, the, like my, like I said, I had two friends, and the that one, one the one guy, uh, his name's Steve. He, uh, he took me to the airport because my parents had come early, like they were visiting and they they, they fucked up. They let me stay home <laughs> by myself for the last week I'd ever live in the house. Oh, man. The fuck were they thinking? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My uncle. Uh, oh, phew, we could do a podcast just on that week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, I can remember crying on the airplane. Like he gives me a hug. I start crying because I was his only friend too. Right. It was, it was like right. the two of us, but yeah. we didn't live near each other. We lived like 20 minutes away. So both of our lives were about to fucking explode or shrink, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I can remember like sitting on the plane and being like crying. This person looking next to me, like, are you Okay. You know, you're, you're 18 years old. You should right. be crying. Yeah. You know, and I think he even saw me like hug my friend. So he thought maybe I left my boyfriend. Right. Like, sure. I, don't, I don't know what he was thinking. It's obviously very emotional. Very emotional. I was like, man, I get to start all over. Right. No one, no, you know, I get to start all over. And I would say through the next 20 years, I developed both the fire marshal, this, mm -hmm. this persona. Mm -hmm. I would, and I don't, I don't think they're that different, but they, there, there's, it's like Elliot on steroids. It's Elliot on steroids. In every sense. Yeah, it's Elliot on steroids, for sure. It's the Muhammad Ali Elliot. But to me, that that is just almost overwhelming to the it point where it's really hard for me to want to like sit down and talk to you because it can be just such one-way traffic. Right. And to, you said something about how you didn't think this was necessarily business-oriented. Uh, I think this is just the people side of business. Right. And, you know, we talk about authenticity and candor and like having real talks. And that's kind of why I wanted to start it with is because for me, just being open and honest about where, what we're even doing before we even do it, that's, there's no better way to, to start out the conversation than to just kind of put all your cards on the table and like, look, this is me. This is how I think. This is what's going on right now. Now, you know, now you know where I'm at. Right. And definitely for, for you, I guess I could see how like, you know, starting at the foundry. I mean, where we were like. It was a wild it, west. It bro. was a wild west, man. Like we could do whatever we wanted. Right. Like we, we could. It, it was the opposite of, of Easton. In so many ways. In so in many all, ways. In almost every In way. every single way. Right. And forget about like the drinking part of it. Just like. Just the, the structure, the culture, the rules, the way that we treated people. Everything. Nothing I'm proud of, to be honest. <laughs> I met my wife there, and now I have these kids. So, For sure. All right. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. I think you came away from else, it better than yeah. me. <laughs> everything else, nothing that I'm proud of. You know, not, yeah. not a single not thing. Not the way you treat people, not how you learn to probably talk to yourself and like, you know, at, at least. I'm, Find I'm, worth. I'm, yeah. Right. Yeah. Find worth. Uh huh. Hair In girl, all the wrong ways. Hair girl, have a free shot. I mean, you know, yeah. like all all of that, all of that. You know, like we all we all know what we do in our twenties. Right. 
So, um, but, and I would say the foundry was that on steroids because we were the fucking shit. Mm-hmm. In all of Boulder. Right? The whole, you know, college town. And when you met. thousand people. Yeah. And when you met me, I just got off TV. For sure. I was on you were TV. already. I'm cold. Uh, you were already like already big and then just getting and then getting bigger right and then i mean we were having viewing parties for yeah. me at the foundry like yeah, all of this and that's right when that's i came right in right when you came in and if you remember i i thought i was super tough and i took an mma fight without really training for it and i was so excited to tell you about it and you were like dude you're a fucking idiot like don't do that unless you're going to train <laughs> thank god you said that right. right like that was probably the single best piece of advice <laughs> anybody's ever, ever well anybody probably cuz you probably saved my life literally cuz i really thought that i was like and and it wasn't based on anything other than this talk about a whole nother podcast. It was based on everything that I felt like I had, like my like protect self preservation. You know, I created this ultra macho tough guy with these huge high walls and the foundry was perfect for that. Cause I could just explore all those ex- like unlimited. Dude, the and, foundry, go ahead. Sorry, you could finish. No. So, so you, you know, when, when you told me, you know, don't, don't do that unless you want to, come do like that's what i do this is my whole life like martial arts if you didn't bring me in like i can't even imagine where i would be you know but it, I, I know it wouldn't be anywhere good like this to me martial arts was the best possible outcome that i can imagine that right. doesn't mean it's possible but the, right. of the ones i can imagine man it like just really righted the ship and like you know, you're the one that brought me into it. So obviously, um, you know, you kind of like for better or worse, you get all the, all the credit you get put up on this pedestal. And we talked a little bit about that, but a higher pedestal than probably then, even everyone else probably put me on. Probably. Yeah. I mean, at, at least as high, like, I don't know. I was everything that you were maybe striving to be in, in, your in mind. a lot of ways. And yeah. You, you know, Mm-hmm. And not, I'm Literally. not trying to say that conceitedly, right? No, like, I know, yeah. but I just told you that. Like, right. I, I, you, I idolize you, and right. that's not fair. That's not fair to you. Certainly not fair to me or my expectations. Right. And those are, you know, you, you if you start out like that, it's only setting yourself up to to crash. But here we are. Well, here we are. But here we are. But and but I I really think that that's because we also had this relationship through martial arts, like a healthy, good relationship, like a, of a a student and an instructor. And, uh, you know, kind of a removing the egos that were just so built up from the foundry for me, at least, you know, you had probably some other ways, but for me, it was like the foundry was like, you know, what I thought the culmination of like self-preservation looked like. And you helped me really like knock those walls down. And I mean, if you talk to anybody that knew me from Boulder, so I trained in Boulder from 2008 to 2011, talk to any of those people, they just think I'm a fucking asshole just an angry bitter grumpy person like that's i've heard that over and over and over and you know that's not something i like hearing and if you you know oh i've yeah we we, and and it uh it's it's something that i'm so embarrassed of but at the same time i'm so grateful that um I, i really feel like i can appreciate what i have now because of it you know i don't know if you can really appreciate having like a calm mind if you've never had like a really out of control ego and like you know you know what i mean like some people just it doesn't seem like that appeals to them so much but for me it was like that's exactly what i thought i wanted and and jujitsu really helped me like right that ship yeah i i mean so I didn't witness all of the 2008 to 2011. Well, you were fighting and I you were traveling fighting, a lot right? and like, and, but I, uh, but I knew it because yeah. I remember when it was time to open Littleton and Mike was like, no, Let, let's talk about that yeah. because that was, I, I would love to, if you, uh, to the extent you feel comfortable sharing, I'd talk about anything. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to hear. I know Mike had Mike was huge like reservations. Yeah. Mike, well, Mike like, and I were kind of, you know, he didn't really like you. Yeah, we were kind of we were kind of like frenemies a little bit, you right. know. Like we're he 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 respected me to the uh, to the extent that he could beat the shit out of me, and I would keep coming back. You know, I wouldn't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know, yeah, we had you know, it you're was like a bro friendship. 
Yeah. It's bro. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like mm-hmm. you, like like the person you call to go out drinking with. For even sure. Even though that's not what you were doing, right? Like, well, we did sometimes. We did sometimes, sometimes got in, too. Got in dumb trouble with right. that too. And we but were just. The person you call to go out drinking with. Not somebody with, would call. But not someone that you call to like go to dinner with. No. Different. No. Different, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like, no. like double date with your girls or not, nothing, no. right? Like, so we all can explain. Like, so that was you and Mike. And Mike probably took some role in that too. Well, yeah, I think he was in a much different place than he is now when, when, when all that was happening. And so then, you know, I moved to Denver and he really didn't hear much from me cause he was running Boulder. Yeah, I was down you. here. Yeah. Well, right. no, was I don't that before Mike or after, I Mike? think it was before. So that was, okay. that was like, I was, I, I wanted to actually bring that up too. Cause that's something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about. I was like, why, um, why did what what changed or why was i like that so for some context i was i wanted i wanted to be part of jujitsu i wanted to take on a bigger role and there wasn't really anything for me so they're like you know you can assist kids classes and that's probably like there's a, a funny quote in the office but he's like the, the smallest amount of power that's ever gone to somebody's head <laughs> that was me you know i was like fuck yeah look at all these little kids that have to listen to me and then you know it's all insecurities all just me like the, the you know the old me or whatever the foundry me like taking advantage of any situation i get and i was like do you want me to turn this fan off no i'm good now okay thanks yeah uh it was it was uh me you know just another example of of how i was and so amal had, i remember i was like at 24 hour fitness and amal called me he's like yeah you know I, I think we're gonna go a different way like you know it's just not working out with you as a, as a kid's instructor and i was like okay. amal called amal called God so that's damn, why i, I think fucking love amal but that's confrontation I, is not his thing yeah well i could tell it was hard for him and yeah. you know it's hard to hear too because yeah. i still was very like cocky and arrogant and i was like what the fuck like you know i didn't do anything wrong like that kid's a little softy you know, that I, th- I, remember. I remember talking to you about it. Yeah. You're like, I didn't do anything because I saw none of this Peter. Right. I saw this Peter that just did everything I said. Well, the, yeah. I mean, and that's all I wanted to present to you because right. I was like so desperately seeking approval right. and like, you know, really, really self-worth, but uh, kind of getting it through your approval. You know, like, man, if Elliot thinks I'm doing good, then I'm actually, then I actually am. It's probably why we might have struggled later sometimes because. Yeah, well, it changes. A I lot. have to let you down. There's no way There's I can no live way up you to can, that. No. There's no fucking way no I way. could ever look anybody. And that's all, I mean, that is on me. I won't say it's all my fault, uh, but it's on me to, you know. Oh, it's 50, uh, it's 50% my fault. No, I wasn't even going to say you. I was just going to say like kind of the, you just happen to be the person that I aimed that at. You know what I mean? But like, um, there was a lot of, a lot of things that happened early in my life that I didn't have control of that kind of set me up for that. But now as an adult is for sure my responsibility to look back at those and work through them and have hard conversations and talk to you about them and talk to a therapist about them and read books day and night. Like that's all I do anymore is literally like, I'm, I, I'm, you know, like a, <laughs> like a junkie almost. I'm like, I love it reading and listening to podcasts, but like things that are going to improve me and not because I don't think I'm good enough, but because really I think I have some amazing gifts that I can really harness and help a lot of people with. And I can't do it if I'm still going to be, uh, the way I was. Once so, you realize, um, how much you don't know, I think you go two ways. You go, Err. shut it down, shut like, it nope, down, don't want to know, shut it down. I know everything, right? And lie to yourself, right? Or you go, oh my God, I just need to get, I, <laughs> Gotta I, go. I don't know anything. I don't have time I don't to know waste anything, I need to, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I can't possibly learn everything, but man, I'm going to try. Right. You know, and yes. it's, it's two ways. And it's super interesting how some people go one way and some people go the other. Mm hmm. And you went this, you went this, just give it to me, give yeah. it all to yeah, me. Yeah. And I think all of us really kind of do that. Most of the Mo- people that we are like in, in, it, in the roles that we're in. Yeah. Right. I think you yeah. have to, you know, like, yeah, you're not going to keep up. There's no way there's, you're not going to keep up. Like, and I don't even care. And I've, and I've tried to talk about this before with people. I don't even care what it is you're learning, but you got to learn, you got to learn something, you know, you have yeah. to, but like really dive in and, and, and delve in. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, talk more about, about what, you, what Mike said oh, and then, okay. and then yeah. how things change because he just told me I must be crazy. I've been based on what he knew. Yeah. You would, you he was would like, be. You're crazy, man. He's like, he's a piece of shit is basically mm-hmm. what he said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's like, he's a bully. 
he basically said, there's no way. He's like, Elliot, this isn't even taking over a new school, an, an existing yeah, school. Yeah, this is starting from zero. This is starting from zero. He's got to come in and make these really deep relationships. What's he going to do? Just beat everyone up? Like, <laughs> you know, like I remember the, like, and I'm I was sure like, he- Mike, I promise you he's different. I promise you. You know, and he's like, what do you mean he's fucking different? He's like six months ago. I was like, Mike, okay, six months ago, one thing, right? Like where maybe like the old Peter, like we all flash. You still flash, right? For sure. Yeah. I still flash. Like, oh, I'm, I'm like this whole like changed person. Like I, I still struggle with these things every day. Right. Most of the time I am successful in dealing with them. Sometimes I'm not. You saw me flash yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't even my doing it at first, no, but, but then, I, then here I go, then the- fuck it, let's go. Like ready to like scrap as far as it, as needs far as to it go. was going to need to go. I was not going to back down. Yeah. There was no way I was backing down. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like you, you know, very frustrating in some ways because you feel like you do so much work and it's like, that's all it takes is one little thing. Like I get frustrated with myself. Oh, I get so mad. I was so <laughs> mad at myself. Yeah. yeah Cause it's, you know, it's not on them. Like they're just providing, you know, the obstacles, the way thing, right. Like they're just providing you with the example of how you're not doing what you need to do and what you need to work on. That's they're, so, they're, they're showing you that you're not God. Yeah. That oh, you're not perfect. It brings you down a little bit. Right. That, sure. you, that just that you're not perfect in this, you know? Yeah. But that's, but I love that idea mm-hmm. that I'm not perfect. I think, I mean, the sooner you can embrace that, the sooner you can actually work on some things. Yeah. So if you're perfect, you don't have anything to work you have on. Nothing to work on. That's yeah. Um, so yeah, he was just like, you've lost your mind. And, I was and, like, then, and then what talk, happened? I was like, talk to Ian. Okay. Because he always trusts Ian's opinion. He and does. Everyone trusts Ian's opinion. I don't know how you cannot, man. Like, Ian is the man. I've gone to Ian with so many things. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. How is he so good at this? Right? So good. The, the amazing thing about Ian, this is the story I always tell about Ian, is you should see him vent. Like, oh, I have. I've seen the uh, other side of it. I've seen the other side behind the curtain when, like, it's not, mad it has somebody? nothing to do with me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, then my I'm God. Like, oh, my goodness. I like, can remember the first he's time, bro, kill somebody. The first time that we had a problem in Denver when he was the GM, and he, like, we go and we're in the office. He's fucking as red as this thing right here, <laughs> like, so fucking mad. And I'm just like, Oh my God, I can't let this him is, do this. Yeah, this like, is, he's not allowed to go bad. talk to this person. No, we here. hired the wrong person, right? Like, like we, like we have, a, we hired a mic on steroids, <laughs> yeah, right? right? Like, you know, like what the fuck? And then like the person walks in the office and he's like, hi, how are you? Good to see you, man. I'm really glad that you came today. And I was like, uh, what? like what? How'd you do that? Like, how, how did you do that? Like yeah. he just has to he's get it out. Right, yeah. Just get it off his chest. And, and then, then he does it amazingly. Yeah, he's literally one of the best conversationalists I've ever met. Yeah, he's like, so good. Empathetic and compassionate, listens, you know, like, yeah, Ian's the man. So then Ian talked to Mike. Ian talked to Mike, and Mike then entertained. Gotcha. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate you. <laughs> good looking out, buddy. <laughs> um, you know? Yeah. Well, I know, like, you you told me to just go to Arvada and spend time with him. Uh-huh. Because he was helping Jeff yeah. at, in Arvada. We just opened we just, just opened Arvada, Arvada. And then this was like, we didn't even know when we were going to get into the building. But we're like, we had to right. figure if, if I'm going to be able to do it. Oh, for the Littleton school. For the Littleton. Right. If I'm going to be able to even be the one to do it, like we got to figure that out sooner than later. So before it was even, before you even signed anything, I had to go to Arvada like two or three days a week and just hang out with Mike. Yeah, you didn't even know if you were going to get the job. No. It was just like, you know, you gotta, you just gotta go do this. Right. So I went and, uh, spent a lot of time with Mike in Arvada and we taught, um, some kids classes together. I really hadn't taught kids since, you know, <laughs> since the incident, yeah. <laughs> since I'm sitting on the treadmill getting like as gently yelled at by them all as probably imaginable. It doesn't he exist. Them all doesn't yell. He didn't yell, but he was like trying to, you yeah. know, it was hard for him. Yeah. Uh, he's, he, he, he did a good job of that conversation now looking back, but, uh, that was the last time I had any kids. I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this. And you were just a noon teacher in Denver, just a noon teacher. I, and and I was fighting most of the time. So I was like, you know, like, like most of the time in Denver with like, once you came down, I quit my job at the law firm and got a bartending job so I could work on the weekends. And I was like in the Academy all day, every day, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, but as far as teaching, you know, members that was just yeah noon you know i didn't teach any kids i didn't i did intros for a little bit and like whatever else needed to be done but yeah that was basically it but it was cool like the noon program had like i think 
for up and coming instructors. The noon class is an amazing little micro academy that you get to start learning how to build a culture because yes. it's none of the same people that come tonight. Yeah. So you don't get your help and Ian's help. It was like, it was up to me to kind of learn how to make sure everybody's in line. And I was, it, you know, there's, you have to build the culture. You have to build the culture, but it I was, think you brought it back after boil because it took this huge dip. Yeah. Right. The, and it was hard because people wanted me to be him. Right. And so a lot of those people ended up finding other instructors and stuff because I'm not him. Right. John's the man, John. I love John. Uh, he, he just set such an amazingly high bar for noon class and morning class. And morning. Yeah. And so, and then when I came in, it was not, yeah, it dipped, dipped pretty hard, but then over time, you know, I started building it up like, but, but kind of from a new, new members more than, right. um, boil members. Yeah. Not boil members. Not, right. Not, not boil members, but we know what we're saying here. Right? No. Like yeah. People for that sure. Loved him. Mm -hmm. That's hard for people sometimes when they lose their instructor, when they feel like the person who's their instructor, because I wasn't their instructor. No. Right. Because no, yeah, I you, wasn't teaching the noon class. Right. And, they, and like it's you said, they them. only came the noon. It's mostly the same people. It's a like, you know, working 30. Yeah. Working people. Lunch A little break. older because they can't come at night. Yeah. They, they have kids to go see their families. Them, yeah. Right. Yeah, so you get a, a really good opportunity to build a little mini culture, and you should make sure that you're still going to night classes. And I was coming to all your classes, right. so I knew that I was right. tapped in. But then it was I was just basically like the, you know, the conduit to take the night culture and like almost try to recreate it for the noon people. But it's it looks Different. differently, right? Yeah, and, and you did a great job of that. I appreciate it. Yeah, you did a real well. It's the only reason I I was like telling Mike. Yeah, yeah. So then you know, then it grew from there with you and Mike. And yeah, he said, okay, Mike and I just really, really like clicked well the second time we started engaging. Even when we opened, he wasn't, he wasn't sold all the way. No, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike had a really hard uh, task ahead of him because he had all this built up, like kind of ideas of, of who I was. And he has like you and Ian, like telling him something else. And there's Mike's like, not a forgiver. It, it it takes him a very long yeah, yeah he's he's he he wasn't really willing to just take your word for it he was like i'm gonna like i'm gonna be skeptical until i have hold no on reason not to yeah, yeah sorry i don't mean to say no, that that's mike not that he's not a forgiver when it's when it's when he rages against somebody he really didn't like you yeah right yeah. like when, when he when it's that He's not, it's so hard for him to come off because he's a super emotional guy. Right. And he loves Easton so much. Right. And I was, and, and, and at that time I was not acting in line with Easton. So therefore he's like, I can't, you know, I can't even say you weren't acting in line. There wasn't really, there, there was not this culture yet. Okay. Fair right. Enough. But sure. you for sure weren't acting in line with what we were what now. What we do now. No, right. Like no, way. no fucking way. And he, and that's what he was making up in Boulder yes. for all these years that I was down here. So he like had this standard of what he wants all of the GMs to be like. And he has all this memory of me just being an asshole. And then he has you and Ian being like, no, he's different. And that's going to take some time to, to really chip away at those, you know, the memories of how I used to be, but we had the Mike and I had some also really hard conversations and some long <laughs> walks up around the, the academy. Like we got to get out of the academy because one or both of us is going to cry or yell or something, you right, know? Like, right. So we would just go for a walk like up the street and, uh, man, those, like, if I think about kind of like the defining moments of like where Mike and I's relationship really like deeply connected was, was during that time. Was like we already opened Littleton. Like you said, he wasn't quite sold. He was sold, he was enough, sold enough to do it. But then he like, I mean, he was down there with me every day. And so it was like now I, you know, I joke around with him I'm like, dude, I just need to go open another Academy so you can come down and hang out with me every day. I miss him. Like it was so much fun, you know, like we really got along great, uh, after some of those, you know, those kind of just like, like really, really raw conversations. I'm going to bring it up now. Um, it's got nothing to do with you. Mike and I are arguing a little bit mm. right now. Or I wouldn't say arguing, we're disagreeing. Yeah. And his stupid quirks are getting on my fucking nerves, and my stupid quirks are getting on his nerves. It's because we're only doing it over this goddamn thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This piece of shit in my hand, right? <laughs> that is so amazing and so terrible. <laughs> yeah. You know? And Ian gave us a suggestion. He's like, why don't you guys just hang out? Right? Because I'm not going away. 
Like I know Mike's the boss, but I'm not going away. I'm not just letting things For go sure. yeah, because yeah. he says so. Yeah. No, you have a very strong opinion I'm and very strong rooted opinion. in some and great, great yeah. facts and great ideas and great, like, uh, you know, experiential data that you've I mean, you've been doing this for a very long time and he's not going away he's for I sure not going away <laughs> yeah i hope not too oh jesus <laughs> Allah, Muhammad, <laughs> Buddha, whatever one. the fuck you are up there don't let my go let away Mike go oh. yeah so what a, yeah that's hard I, I think ian once again ian knows everything <laughs> he's yeah the man so he was like he's why don't you guys spot on he's like go, go hang out go hang out so now mike's gonna come hang out every other week nice so we get to like walk through it you know, because so we get to be friends. We get to talk about things. Well, yeah, you don't d- disagree on everything. No. You agree on most things. We agree things. on most things, but we're only talking about the things we disagree on, and we're not, like, seeing each other. And when this whole thing was formed, right, like, he was only in Boulder, and we were going to lunch all the time, and we were, you know, like, it yeah. was like train, lunch, boom, the LA go to Denver every day. Yep. So we'd, like, shoot the shit, talk about ideas, da, 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 you know, and, and that's how we figured all of this out. Right. And, um, so yeah, it was, it was, that's, and now like as it grows, the people part moves away. Right. Right. And then you start only talking about problems, Yeah, you know, and then you start like, well, I think we should, and then, you know, so it's not even like we're mad at each other, but I'm not mad at him at all. And he's not mad at me. Right. Yeah. You just disagree. But I think that's a great way to solve it for sure. People like what made me think of is you guys were like hanging out all the time. You want to open another school so you can hang out just so I can hang out with them. So, and and I feel so bad for everyone that watches sometimes and isn't like, uh, and like, it's like, man, I'm going to get the nuggets. I am going to learn how to run my Academy. And we just, I mean, Jordan, how long are we going to talk about the same thing? Right. It keeps coming up. It's the only thing we do though. Pe- that, pe- people people yeah yeah uh, we, you and i have talked a lot about this like if jujitsu you know if jujitsu was playing cards then we would open casinos right, right. like the jujitsu is literally just the the vehicle, the vehicle that helps us build these relationships but yeah. it's the people that are or like if you're not people focused i don't know what you, i don't know what I don't you're know doing what do. i don't know what you're doing i don't yeah. yeah i don't know what to do you know mm-hmm. and for sure look that look there's all these particulars but you could do all of the, like, right. How do we sell? We sell a certain way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's not revolutionary. It's like, right. How do we run a, how do we teach a class? We teach our class a certain way. It's structured. How do we follow up? How do we do this? How do we do that? How do we train? Blah, blah, blah. Like, like, yeah, none of those things though are, are, are things that like, I really think that you could take all of those systems. And if you don't understand why those systems are in place and how they work, you know, it's not the system that's magic. It's the application of the system across relationships. Right. To me, that's like, if you, you know, the reason you're following up every, you know, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, whatever, is because you, you, you're, you care about these people and you're checking on them and they're embarking on something that's really difficult. You might not care about them. You want to care about them. Well, you have to build a relationship. Right. You can't just care about somebody you don't know. Right. But that's like a, a kind of a structured way to build a relationship, build up some good faith. Like, man, this guy keeps checking on me. Whether or not it's his job or not, he's still doing it, and I appreciate it, and this is hard, and I don't know if I should quit. But he keeps saying, I'll come back. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. Right. That's that's why we do those systems, right? It's not just like like if you automate it and have somebody you know, just send a text to everybody, it wouldn't be the same. Like yeah, you. there's there's way cheaper ways to do it than what we do it. Yeah, for sure. But and way more efficient. If if it was just the system. If it was just the system. If it was just the system. If it was contact everyone that's been that that hasn't been here for four weeks. And then we all get generic fucking text messages to our phone. Yeah, you just block the number. And you don't block the number, you anymore. ignore it, and then you right. You I really try to like make sure my texts come across as like I'm a real person. Don't block, you know, because right. we have to text. Well, we don't have to, but we use the the same number as we have uh, like the phone phone the, number, the Google Voice or whatever, right? With the well, text, yeah, uh, what text do we use us. now? Text mm-hmm. us. So it's the same number as as you can call, right? But we're all like you know. So I'm like, look, I'm not a computer. Like, this is really me. I really am checking on you, you know, like, right. because people, yeah, they, th- that's such a turnoff to them. Like once they feel like they're just a number or just a, you know, a dollar sign or whatever, they start getting treated like they don't matter. They're going to be out. Cause this is way too hard to do. Like, that's the thing. That's the other thing. Jiu Jitsu is so hard. 
So yeah, Muay Thai martial arts, right? Like, well, yeah, I, I, have, I, I only have jujitsu jiu in my academy, right. so I, I kind of talk in that. But yeah, any of them where they're really testing your ego and challenging you and like breaking you down in those types of ways, it's brutal. But if you don't have a support system, you don't haven't met any friends, you haven't talked to anybody. Man, I can't. I had a, a bunch of friends at jujitsu. I can't tell you how many times I quit jujitsu in, right. in the shower. Like, fuck this. I'm never. Like, why right. do I even do this? What is like? And then, I, you know, I talk to Ian. Ian talks me off the ledge. Here I am again, you know, <laughs> standard. <laughs> Once a year, at mm, least, I, I quit jujitsu oh, in the office. It's so interesting, man. Like, and I, I was thinking about it last night. I think a lot of it has to do with losing. For, you lose for, so much more you, than you win. You lose so much more than you win. Not but even, think yeah. about um, like my neighbor over there. When do you think is the last time that they lost? Almost That's never. Something you you other shy than board away game. from it your whole life. That's something other than a board game. Something that really mattered? Yeah. The 20 years. 20 years. Know, probably. We're, we, 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 we leave it. Right. And, and, and martial arts makes you face it. Over and over and over. You can't run away from it. It's right there. Right in your face. It's right in your face. And, and you, then, you figure out how to deal with it or you quit. And you try to you can make you can try to make all the million excuses you want, right? About who did this and why did that. And you, it only comes know. back to one thing. <laughs> you. Yeah, you know. You lost. Yep. So yeah, it's so hard. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. It's so difficult. And we're not talking about being a champion. No, We're just, just talking about just walking in the getting door. Getting through an uh, intermediate class, like yeah. the fundamentals class, you're not really training live. You don't. Re you're not really forced to look at yourself like, man, I suck at this. Like, I don't know anything. You get take your first intermediate class. You might as well. You know, you're speaking a different language under, like, basically underwater, some unfamiliar environment, and everybody's better than you. And how long do I have to be that like the worst person in the room? That's not a good feeling. And, and, but you have to get through that because yeah. you're going to be the worst person in the room for a long until time until somebody else comes in. Until, oh, yeah. Thank God. <laughs> and yeah, but even imagine then, if you're you know, tiny. For real, right? That's like yeah. I, imagine I, I, I have these couple girls that are coming to my intermediate class now, and they're like 110 pounds. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, and I'm like, why won't you just? Rel and I, I have to keep telling myself, why won't you just relax and not be so fucking nervous and like. And then I'm like, wait a minute, Elliot. Yeah. This is so easy for you to say. Two and a half times what they yeah. were. And yeah. E even when I came, I could just push somebody around mm -hmm. and win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get away with it. I, yeah. I talked to my, like, we have a, a kind of a, a big group of bigger, strong guys that are all, you know, white belts and just got their, getting their blue belts mm -hmm. soon. And I talked to them all the time. It's like, man, you guys have a much harder learning curve because you're going to have to force yourself to do something that you don't have to do like the girls and 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 not just the girls because there's a bunch of smaller, smaller men guys. and like just anybody who doesn't have those physical advantages they don't have the, it's not like they get to decide whether or not to use them it's not on the it's not on the table for them so they have to learn the techniques they have to learn resilience they have to learn you know all the things that we say jujitsu or martial arts teaches you like you know being comfortable being uncomfortable those big guys don't have to do that they have to put themselves in it. They have to take the power, take the speed, take the strength all the way down, pretend like they're a hundred pounds. And then how does your, how does your technique work? Right. Cause otherwise, you know, right. You end up like, like me and you, <laughs> right? Yeah. Man, for me, the girls are my, 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 uh, they're my, they're my measuring stick. Like I always yeah. look at my class and be like, all right, how many girls do I have in my class? Man, that's so funny that you say that because I just had a really good talk. I have uh, a purple belt coach, Coach Gail. Uh -huh. She comes to a lot of my classes and she helps out a lot and all this. But I had a great talk with her. I think it was Monday night. And I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, I, I, I agree with you 100% that that is the measuring stick of, of like the culture. Are we a meathead culture where only the big, strong guys are getting, you know, are, are want to be here and nobody else wants to be here? Or are we, a, you know, especially we, for me, I feel like because I'm 250 pounds, right? I'm loud. Yeah. Like I'm the antithesis of what like smaller girls, like I scare, I mean, I scare dudes. Yeah. You scare, right? scare I all scared, of us I scare if you want to. Dudes, yeah. right? With mm -hmm. my fire marshal, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so I can't imagine what I do to, to some of the girls, right? Right. Um, I, and so I have to really work hard of trying to make them 
well, what, you know, when I, when I'm fire marshaling, right? You know, yeah. Which the whole school hears when it's happening. You can't not, right? Yeah. And uh, so I have to work really hard to 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 get o- to get over that. Um, I could probably not fire marshal as much, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> For sure, it's not that. Uh, <laughs> Laughing too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking notes and laughing at the same time. So uh, yeah, uh, that that's my, like because I'm the, I I'm super scary. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So if but but if you're still making them feel welcome and still they're still getting something out of it, obviously because they keep showing up. That I think I think that's a great way to measure. It's one of the most right. important measurements of having a, a martial arts school versus a fight Place gym. Him. Tell your Gale story, and then I have a, I have a, I have a oh, which Gale story? No, the one you were just talking about. Oh, talking about I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> when she so hated us, <laughs> talk, talk about it, a whole new podcast. Uh, hi, Gale. Gale. How Don't. many times have you hated me and Peter Gale? <laughs> More than once. Let's say that. Go home, Gale. Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Gale and I just had a really good talk. Uh, I think that Gale has some great perspective. She's come up in a complete, you know, in on on the professional side, she's come up in a male dominated. Um, you know, environment and, and right. culture. And so she, I think she's really learned how to thrive in those. And that's what makes her like, I think so appealing to so many people at jujitsu is like, man, she's just a really strong, badass woman. You know, like I look up to her a lot. Um, but not everybody's like that. Not everybody has had to cut their teeth in a really hard male dominated society like she has. That's why she's, you know, mm-hmm. still here. And mm-hmm. a lot of other people aren't. Uh, is because you know they haven't had to learn how to deal with that, and so that's something. That's one of the things that is kind of on the on my radar now is to make sure that I'm more aware of it, and then making making real tangible improvements towards that. Yeah. Without without watering it down, without placating to like weakness, and you know, like it's not okay to just have a separate class where everybody plays patty cake. That's no, not what we no, do. We're not doing that. Yeah, you know, we're not so doing that. That's yeah. It's that it's such a challenge and especially as a man, I it's, it's impossible for me to say I know what they go through. There's no way. There's no way. I have no idea what it's like. But I see that they, you know, I see that they struggle and I I can empathize with that and then you know, it's up to me to figure out what I can do to to help. And you know, that's back to conversations and right relationships but i have to say you said it you uh like watering it down i have to say that was one of the most proudest things for me about abcc i was like look we we can st- we can get here we, we, yeah we have two guys and right? i just one outlier right? like i mean you guys are both outliers i sure, guess right, we're outliers right now but we're not gonna be no right? no 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 we're we're have, we have a, we have a, a solid group of guys coming uh-huh. up. so girls, we can get people. here and we can have this right like like scared petrified yeah you know like so little kids that come in with kids, their shoulders hunched over, yeah, wanting to look you in the you know, eyes, and next thing you know, they're yes, sir, loud. That confident. kids, that kid can. That we we got both. Yeah, because most do one. Right. Yeah. You have a bunch of killers, killers, and nobody else makes it. Right. Or it's watered down. Or it's watered down. Mm-hmm. Right. That's like that. When when that was one of the things that made me the most proud for us. Like for sure that we could that we're yeah because like, we have a lot of other data that supports what we're doing for for most people you know mm-hmm, like the, the mm-hmm. but then you always wonder are we watering it down and just you know pandering to the masses so everybody will do so it so everyone will do it but oh, well, and that's just the common theme that other people will say well you just fucking yeah dude right you're a fucking but mcdojo that's what that that would be the accusation right but we have we have the other side of it to, we, to support it yeah yeah so, i agree that's that was really cool yeah, that, I mean, so that for me was was a super proud moment for, on a personal level and a professional level. Yeah, right, definitely. Both. So, um, but oh, the story I was going to say. So the girl story. No, not girl. Oh. It's not girl. It's another girl. Um, and I'll, I'm going to leave her name out. Yeah, that's fine. Gail, um, Gail's in it enough that we can say Gail. I would yeah, say, yeah, yeah. right? Everybody knows Gail. Yeah. Um, man, I used to, you know I try to talk at the end of class, right? Inspire, and I would always I try to like gauge the room as I'm doing it and as I'd gauge the room I'm trying to like make eye contact with people and this person would always like everyone I try to make eye contact with everyone they would always like look away yeah I was like god damn that girl fucking hates me (laughs) right like and then we do the the belt whipping thing in Denver right oh yeah how does that go (laughs) um she wouldn't do it no (laughs) you know I was like 
yep, she hates me. I was like, wow, <laughs> she really fucking hates me. You know, I'm like, oh, well, you know, a little bit. But I would still try to be nice to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, she was sitting on the couch, like, a month ago. She was like, hey, I think I really want to come try your class. And I was like, really? Mm. I got so excited. Oh, made- oh so... Um, at the end of class, you line everybody up. I so it was every- not your she student. Was, not, yeah, she, yeah, okay, I'm that sorry, makes let sense. me explain that more. So yeah. at, at 7 o'clock, I have my advanced class, no gi. At 7.30, Chris Mearswack has a gi fundamentals. fundamentals. So you have fundamentals in white belt. White belts. Mm-hmm. So but I'm not don't teaching know her. Yeah, anything about nothing. Me. What you. Right. But at 6 o'clock, I am teaching an intermediate. Right. And you have to have two stripes to get into the intermediate class. Right. So she, you know, I know that she has her two stripes. And one of the things that I always say to some of the, the two stripe people is I'm always like, Hey guys, look, you have to come to intermediate class. Like I know fundamentals is safe and it's nice, but, but intermediate, come on. Right. Like if you have two or three stripes on your belt, you, I don't want to see you over there. Right. I want to see you coming Let's to me, mm-hmm. but again, I'm intimidating. I'm this, I'm that. Right. Like, and I, and I get that. Um, most everyone's probably going, well, don't be so fucking intimidating, asshole. Again. Again. Not. <laughs> a little bit. It's just my presence. Yeah, it's, for sure. Right. Henzo's fucking intimidating. Yeah, yeah. Go be around Henzo. And he's not my size. Right. right like, right. but he's intimidating. Yeah. And he, and he loves everyone. Right. So anyway, so yeah, that's the situation, right? She's not in my class, but we're closing up at the same time. And then she said that to me. And I was like, oh my God. Wait, really? I was like, really? No way. Yeah. yeah. No way. And I was like, Okay, come on, Ellie. You got to make this happen. Yeah, right. You got you got to make her have the best fucking class when she gets when if she comes. And she came and excuse me, I can still see it's a struggle for her. Sure, you know, because I well, it's still a struggle for a lot of people. Because I can't water down the class, right? Right. Because my class they're is, hard classes. They're hard class. Uh, what what I I'm demanding. Yeah, yeah. You have high expectations. I'm for demanding how, how people are gonna right get it. Especially with the jujitsu, like we're going to do like, you know, like and technically you mean, or no, not so much technically, but I do it with the flow. Right. And I'm like, I'm not teaching the flow all the time. So sometimes yeah, it can yeah, be so you got to kind of get it. As and you, I, you have it to, te- as you go. right. You have to tell them like, look, you just got to keep coming. Cause in, in three weeks you're going to get the flow. Yeah. Cause weeks, it doesn't change it doesn't that change. much. A little bit every week right. changes, but uh, yeah. So right now I know this is like, you just learned 30 fucking moves. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be the same one. It's going to be the same 30 moves in six months. Yep. So, but you know, we're getting there. Cool. We're getting there. So she's, she's still, she's still, still coming. coming. She's still coming. She was just there yesterday. So I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. That's great. You know? mm-hmm. And it's, again, it's a people thing for sure. Like I have to try to relate and you have to try to relate to these people that are nothing like us. Yeah. 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 But there's something. There's a, I mean, we all have something physically alike. nothing like us, right? Sure, like they're yeah. so different than mm-hmm. us. So, but yeah, so there's all these tricks and I think this conversation started with, there's all these tricks like this of, uh, sell like this, teach like this, do marketing like this. Right. But if that person doesn't feel like you really care about them, doesn't matter because we're in a not care world for sure. We're, we're like with me and Mike, we're in a, this world. Yeah. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, that I mean, that really is all we do. It's mm-hmm. just the connections. Like everything else is is supplemental to that. It's building relationships with people, making them feel like they're part of a community, like they're part of something bigger than themselves, and that they have a place in it, that they matter, they belong, and it's super empowering to be plugged into something like that. And it feels really shitty when you're not. Right. And uh, I really think that like that's what ha- what keeps more people coming and what keeps people coming back is is that side of it i'm gonna ask you a question yeah um when you went and opened littleton you were in a, you came from this tight community in denver yeah and i remember you talking to me about this like dude this is fucking hard because like i don't have my brothers i don't have anybody I don't right have, so yeah. I, I i came from like you said i i was teaching noon classes plus i was taking all the night classes even i came in last night to to drop off that scanner and said what's up i still see everybody i'm like so yeah yeah it's like all my yeah, people your homies so you, you go from that to you know about 15 20 minutes away it's not even that far away but you're alone and like there was classes where I, nobody showed up. So I'm just sitting there. And then the, the classes that people do show up, there's a couple of transfers, but for the most part, I think there was maybe at most like eight or 10 people transferred, maybe 
of of all my members. So everybody else and they're was not a, even like your homies though. They're no, just, it was people yeah. that lived closer. It's, it, well, I didn't. I for sure didn't get to bring everybody with me, and it was really hard. Like it was a challenge because. I felt really lonely. I missed all those people and I didn't have any of my connections. So I, I, I thrive off of it too. I'm the same as everybody else in the sense that I want to be part of something. And I, uh, now, I, now I'm not part of anything. Now I'm creating something. That was really difficult. And it took some time for me to let go of Denver and be like, look, Denver isn't my home. Cause I would try to like hang on to it. And you know, I'd be like, well, I'll do this thing in Littleton, but then when I need to get recharged, I'm going to go to Denver, be with I'm my go people. see mom and dad. I'm yeah, gonna, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I had to let that go and be like, Littleton is my, these are my people. This is my home. This is where I'm going to plant some new roots so that I have some support here because otherwise like this is not sustainable. This is not, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm failing. I'm not only failing myself, but I'm failing everybody else because who else is going to create that culture who else is going to start it down there if not me that's why you guys sent me down there right otherwise you just take any random person that doesn't understand how things work like you you believe that i understood it enough to go like make a satellite version of it and as soon as i kind of let let go of the idea that it was going to be denver like this is going to be littleton and we're going to have our own identity and we're going to have our own community and these are going to be my man i've made some amazing connections some great people it's so it's so cool i'm so lucky to to have all those people dude i called you after the ceremony the one year anniversary yeah 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 holy shit dude it was amazing it was, was amazing. That's how I feel too. It I was, was blown away. It was the, amazing. The Those people love you. Yeah. It was so evident. Like the kids, their parents, the adult students. I was like, hell yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There was like so many people there. Most of those people are not members, right? So right. like we had, I think at the time we had like maybe a hundred, hundred and thirty, hundred and forty, thirty, 30, under 150. Yeah. I think. Or maybe right at oh, like around 150 members. So half of those are kids. Yeah. You know, dude, it was so there was like cool. two, two or 300 people there. I was like, man, he fucking hit a home run. It's, it feels, I mean, it feels like it's really becoming something that like, like, like I was talking about, like really becoming its own little community. How and, much, and when family. I say you hit a home run, how much money did you put back in my pocket? You know how much money you've put back in my pocket? I don't know, but it's not, it, it's not a lot. I would have to look at it, but yeah, no, almost, almost none. Like relative. $5,000. 5000 Nice. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Is that good? <laughs> he doesn't want me to be a fire It's like $5,000. Yeah. Right? Okay. $5,000. Yeah. On, on a much larger investment. <laughs> now, I'm talking back, and I haven't made my investment back at all. No, dude, this is 5000 This is, is 5000 back towards the, what towards. I, my, my feeder money. Right. You know, and 5000 to them all. Mm hmm Right? Yeah. Um. So... But that was a home run to me. Yeah. You hit a fucking home run, man. Because God damn, that was so cool. Like like you you couldn't stop giving people hugs. Yeah, the whole time that's all I did was yeah. walk around and give everybody hugs and smiles and talk. Like to your them. ribs must have been sore from people <laughs> squeezing you. Yeah, and I yeah. thought that was so amazing. Yeah. That, you was, know? that was so amazing. I I like I was I was driving home, I was like, and my wife was even mad at me that day. We got in a huge fight. <laughs> You know, and, but that made my day so much better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Because that was just, I'm not even like, I know like if, if you can do that and if you can keep doing that, then the rest of it's going to take care of itself. Right. Like my investment back and, and all of that, right. It's, it's going to take care of itself. Sure. You know, because who doesn't want that today? Right. Yeah. When all we hear is how terrible we all are. You know how different how, we how are. Different we mm -hmm. are. You you voted for Trump, right? You're yeah, it's just so right? polarized, and you voted for Trump. You're pro pro choice. Wait, just to be clear, I didn't, but yeah, right. No, I'm just <laughs> right, right, right. You know, but like <laughs> every careful there. All all, all <laughs> of the breaking news yeah, when yeah. you turn on the TV, it's horrible. Is about is about the, the how bad the other people are. The other, the, the that other. Mm -hmm. You know, and I guarantee you, you have. 50% of the people in your school voted for Trump. Yeah, That's mean, what the statistics say. Yeah, statistically, right? yeah, probably Let's say 40%. Yeah. 
Let's say 35. That's still a bunch of people. Still a bunch of people that I probably don't really agree with on a lot of things. But forget you. Forget you. Because they're going to look up huh? to you, right? Yeah. They're going to look up to you. They're going to put you on pedestal. Right. But, you, the, but then you have these other people like that voted for Hillary. Yeah, and you they're know, all training together. They're all, all training the- together. And somehow you're the glue. You were the glue. Yeah. Right? You were, you were the glue. So that was just amazing to me, especially in, in this day and age. Right? I, I know I keep fucking... I play with this all the time. I'm sorry. Um, in this day, it was so cool to me, man. And they loved you so much. It was just so fucking badass. You know, because you're the one who... You're the glue. Yeah. You know, you were the glue. And that's... It's, that's what we're doing, man. All right. You know? Uh, that means a lot. Uh, it meant a lot to me when you called me. And it means a lot to me now that you say that. Because um, I, I feel the same way. But, you know, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't think that you like your your approval of that mattered right or if you know if does that make sense like it still matters to me i still want to be doing what you you know what you think is is right but it's just that i don't view you the same way in in some in some senses but in other senses like you've also done this for a long time and you've been around a bunch of jujitsu academies and you've been around a bunch of different environments and so for you to say that this is like we're, we're doing it right that still means a lot right it doesn't maybe it's different from how 10 years ago how i'd have been like oh my god i'm just fucking i just won you know i'm, I'm mm-hmm. done life like mm-hmm. i just made it i don't feel like that now i still feel like i have plenty of work to do but i still really value your opinion so i don't want, i don't i don't want that to get like confused right i still do value you a lot and like i said i love you um i just don't have like such high pedestal expectations from you like i really feel like we can have these deep real talks now and i'm super grateful for that but i still value what you what you have to say i appreciate it and you i think you've just i've just fucked up enough for you and let you down enough yeah right? i mean as anybody would right it's not like you've done it more than somebody else would sure but you're just not perfect right and nobody is and so. nobody is right yeah but it was hard for me to accept that right you know Cause I was like, no man, Elliot, like I would literally would have fucking ran into traffic for you. Literally. I'd be like, fuck, this sucks. But I don't, all right, here we go. <laughs> Try not to get hit. <laughs> You're like, really? Damn. And like, and, and you know, I mean, I was thinking a little bit more about this too. Like you were very, very hard on me, way harder than anybody else. Like you would make me do death matches after every freaking practice. And I hated it. I was like, God, this sucks. But all right, I'm doing it. Elliot says I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You know? And, uh, I, I like I'm grateful for that too because that really like taught me how to dig deep and like you know when I did not want to do shit I still can do it and you know I, I don't know forges the soul a little bit yeah exactly it, it made me a strong person I, right. and so nobody, I'm grateful nobody, for that nobody wants to do death matches no they suck so I, I I would be more nervous about how I do than like at a tournament yeah like the in-house things are, are hard on on your psyche because it's like all your homies yeah a death match let's explain what the death yeah, match yeah. is real fast um nothing counts until somebody taps yep just just no points no just points. go just Let slap me, hands and go know, and sometimes i mean jeff and i think jeff, jeff and, and Mercado, Jared, they, they went like twice an for an hour and a half yeah right i, mean, there, I, mean, I so, think they're one and one i think so yeah I think they went twice for an hour and a half. Yeah. And I can remember one time with deathmatch. Um, I know we're getting off track here a little bit. I, I, everyone, like we went through three death matches in like five minutes. I was livid. Yeah, like, I sat the- everyone down. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Death <laughs> match. How this is supposed to go. Yeah. Don't die. Yeah. Right. Well, Tyrone put me to sleep one time in a death match. That was cool. I that was, was cool. like a blue belt yeah, at, yeah. The favela. at the favela. <laughs> <It's> great. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, Tyrone, come do a death match with Peter. I was like, fuck that. Tyrone's not tapping me. And he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't count. <laughs> didn't tap. <laughs> he just put me to sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was rough. Those were those were hard times. But like I said, like that's really what I'm grateful for is like the building of the confidence. Because you can't be insecure and keep doing those things. You have to find something that like is real inside you because yeah, that shit sucks, but yeah. you have to find, you know, you got to find something. Yeah. And, and it has to be from you because nobody else is helping you. They're all just sitting there like, Oh, watch. that sucks. I, and I used to make everyone watch. Yeah. Everybody circles up and then 
Yeah, me and Tyrone. Yeah. Black belt. He's been a black belt longer than you, I think. Or yep, as yep. long. I, yeah, he's got four stripes right now. He's yeah. Monster, you know, pro fighter. Right. And I'm this little blue belt that's like, oh, Elliot, I don't want to fight. I'm like, okay. Right, go do match. a death match with Tyrone. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's you know, that's what I, I think I took away from it the most is like how much more confident I am. And I don't have to be so such a bully. I don't have to put up these high walls and make people think a certain way about me. I can be more open because I have a deep confidence in myself that like I'm enough. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. I'm, you know, whatever. Well, you just got 100% embarrassed in front of the whole school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You better. Yeah. So you you better, better find something else. You better find something because nobody else is validating something. you at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. How did I do? Dude, amazing. This is this is all I wanted. I just right. didn't want to come on and get the fire marshal yeah. because uh, I just, I know you too, too well. And like we were joking about it right before we started this, you're like, this is not the gospel of fire. This is, and I was like, yeah, I know. I don't want it to be. And that's, it was funny that you said that because you were aware of it. But for me, it was really important. And that's why I wanted to write it down so it would come across because uh, sometimes I, I I think better when I'm writing than when I'm talking. Sometimes right. I just can't articulate it the same way. So thanks for letting me read that. Yeah, man, of course. I was like, I, like, I knew you wanted to read something. You didn't something. have any idea. I was like, man, will you send yeah. it to me, please? And you're like, nope. nope. I was like. <laughs> I knew that was, I did. I almost didn't even want to tell you, but I was like, well, I need to tell him that something, like I, w I would like you to right. let me read it. So I have to tell him something. Right. But. Yeah. So yeah, man, I try, I even try not to fire Marshall on gospel fire. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, um, it doesn't help the authenticity of the conversation. I a hundred percent agree with that. I definitely fire Marshall more in big groups. Right. And that, that like the personality that can capture a big group has to be a personality that's bigger than the, than like the real one-on-one -on -one Elliot. Right. So that's where that comes from. And, and I it's think got its place. It does, and it did an amazing job for you for a long time of like helping you, you know, be who you are and get where you are. Because you know, like it, it it served its exact purpose. But for me, I just have I've seen both of them, and so that's you I like just want, you like the other one better. I like the other one better. Yeah, yeah, because it's real. It's authentic. Right. It's it's honest. It's yeah. I think most of our students. Like, okay, so Denver, right? Like, I think everyone that comes on Tuesday and Thursday nights and takes my classes, they know the real Elliot, even though it's a lot of They've fire They've seen Marshall, little glimpses of it. But yes. they see glimpses every day, right? Yeah. And if and But when I tell people, whenever somebody comes to visit, I'm like, look, I'm an acquired taste, okay? You, you're you not allowed to write a review until you're here for a month, right? okay? So I no, no one star on Yelp yet, right? Like, <laughs> if, if a, in a month a you lot. still think it's a one star, Right, then go ahead. But it's like what Jared says, right? Uh, man, everyone starts out with, God damn, I hated that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you. But you know, see, I didn't. Right. I did not you start didn't. with that. Yeah, you and loved. Now, my and wife, my wife did. <laughs> <laughs> she went out with me to win a date, win a bet, to win man. A bet. To win yeah. a bet. It's fucked yeah, up. Yeah, it's fucked up. And she won the bet. Hey, but you won the war because you got two beautiful kids in this house. So I know, whatever. I know. She loves me too. She's, <laughs> Jokes on her. Yeah, no, she loves me too, <laughs> yeah. man. You know, but but she, you know, she she definitely was like, "You are such a fungus." That's what she says to me. <laughs> you just grow on you. She actually bought me that shirt for my fucking birthday one year. What? I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a fungus. I grow on people. <laughs> it's not wrong. Um, cool, man. Well, I really appreciate you uh, having me on here. I hope that. Uh, other people get some value out of it. But for me, I got a lot of value out of just getting to sit and talk with you. I know. We just don't get to do it that we much don't. like this, uh -huh. right? Like uh -huh. it's, it's, I think I love it so much. I love podcasting. Yeah. That makes sense. This I is awesome. It. This I is cool. I love it, man. I I've been get... on a couple of them, but not ne never with like my friends, right. like my homies, you know, like it's cool. There's a good to hang out. I love all of them because I don't like talk. Like even when I do that at the, the gospel of fire, and I talk about like MMA and like with an MMA person, I, I am just, I don't care about the MMA part. Right. Like I don't want to talk about that. Like, no, you just have a common yeah. thing, but then you go down, then we go down it. Right. I, you start with the common linker and then you get into like the, yeah, it's a great jumping off. Yeah. Point. Let me see who you are. Yeah. So, for sure. um, guys, uh, Easton dot online, right, Jordan? Yeah. Yeah. Easton dot online. Uh, hopefully we're going to have this course out for you. First impression specialists, um, which is going to be all about sales, right? All, all about how to get someone from being a 
prospect to a committed loving member, you know, and we're going to, the whole process, how, how we do it, there's no gimmicks to it. There's no, um, sales tricks to it. There's nothing. It's just sitting down and, and explaining and talking to someone like an actual human being, like, like, like we all like to actually do. So, um, that's going to come out hopefully by the new year. Um, and man, hit us up, hit us up, hit me up. You know, hit Peter up. If you have any questions, man, please, his, please feel free. I don't even care if I don't know you, yeah. right? If I don't know you, but you got a question, you you know, man, they're, 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 I don't need your money. I don't need anything. Hit me up and, and I'll do my very, very best to answer your question. Fire Marshal 205, Peter Straub, MMA. MMA. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we love doing this. So, that's what we do. That's what Thanks, we do. Guys. Appreciate All right, it. guys. Thanks, everyone.